with us now is going to be Marty Nolenberg. He is the co-owner of the Sedona Tap House Restaurants, but also you are a former estate senator. I believe that's where I knew you. Uh, thank you for being with us here on the Megacast. Happy to be here and uh, honored to, to help. Uh, what a crazy time. Like you, I believe you started the first one, uh, Sedona, at uh, 2017 in Troy. Then you opened up the second location in Novi in 2019. And then the pandemic hits. <laughs> so how is it going uh, for you and your company right now? I mean, it's, it's been challenging. I mean, obviously, um, you know, being forced to shut down and then trying to figure out how to reopen in a safe way and then to be shut down a second time. Obviously, that was really devastating to us and uh, certainly unexpected for us to see that happen. I knew that the numbers were going up and, and I knew that, you know, mitigation efforts uh, needed to occur, but I never envisioned a shutdown. And, and when you shut down, it's, it's devastating on our employees, especially before the holidays. And our business did not survive without our employees and to have to tell them that they let go a month, month and a half before the holiday season when that's when they make the most money of all the 12 months. I and mean, that's the busiest time of year for restaurants. They rely on that money to support their families and, and the kids and, and to see them, you know, have to file for unemployment um, is devastating to them. And, and to me, you know, I can't run a business without them. And so it hurts when I have to tell them that, that bad news. And so, um, but we're, we're, you know, obviously we're back up, you know, we're, we're now four days into this thing and um, they're excited, they're motivated to be back and they wanna work. And, and we've been very blessed and fortunate that we've got great employees that are ready to work. And, and, and um, you know, we put in a, a number of social uh, safety measures Every employee that enters our place has to do a temperature check. We uh, do a health screening uh, check with them as well. And if they are feeling feverish or feeling ill, we advise them to not even come in at all because we don't want them to hurt, uh, harm um, the other employees and uh, obviously the, our guest as well. And so we've got a number of safety mechanisms in that regard, obviously, the tables are spread out. We have, you know, room dividers all over the place. We have, um, you know, single source condiments. Um, we have uh, throwaway menus. We have digital menus. Um, you know, we sanitize, clean. Um, so we've had a number of meetings with our employees on the importance of safety and health, and not only for themselves, but also for our guests as well. And we talk about this as well, um, because in the beginning, uh, like back in November, a three week pause, which turned into almost three months. And when people say, oh, well, you can get unemployment, let's just be clear what so many of these people were collecting on unemployment doesn't even come near to what they were making um, in a day or even a week. Uh, uh, of being in a restaurant because you were relying on the tips as well. So we've had um, a local bartender here on our show as well. And you see the devastation that they go through uh, when you close down because carry out doesn't sustain some businesses and some of these restaurants have had to close down because their carry out business didn't support their business model. Um, but when you go forward, do you anticipate because we're reopening, but we're also reopening uh, just before the Super Bowl, which I'm really surprised that she did. I thought she would have waited until after the Super Bowl. Um, but also when we're reopening after the Super Bowl, do you anticipate if the numbers continue to rise that we're going to see another complete shutdown again? Or do you think the curfew is going to be kind of the standard that we go forward from here on out? I mean, Monty, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, I, I haven't been able to, you know, figure the mindset of this governor from day one. And, and, and I guess, you know, my, my frustration is when, with the second shutdown back in November, you know, we were told three weeks. And we were hopeful that it would just be three weeks. And then in, in December, we were told it was another three more weeks and in January, another three more weeks. And so you're on pins and needles all the time. And 
you know, I would argue that her metrics don't really support her efforts. 47 other states have been open in some way, shape, or form for quite a while now. And Michigan's sort of the outlier in all of this. Um, and, you know, the, the, the most recent shutdown, why, why, why 10 p.m.? Why 25%? Why not 31%? You know, why not 11 p.m.? I mean, where is the supporting data that says that, you know, it's 25%? There isn't any. It's just an arbitrary decision that she has made. And I get that she's trying to be safe, you know, but there's got to be balance. And I don't see the balance in any of her, her actions. And it's devastating. We talked about the bartender you mentioned. It's not just the, the pay. It's, it's the mental, you know, anguish that goes on as well because you're not employed, you're sitting home, you want to work, you, you get stir crazy. And for a lot of our employees, they have families and, you know, they um, have kids. And so they're, they're at home, they're trying to juggle their family life with their kids. Um, that's, that's challenging and they're not getting paid. So it, it, it's, it's not just paid, it's all of these things coming, coming together. And, um, that's frustrating for them. And so I, I, I can't predict what's next. I, I would just say that you can't stop commerce. I mean, we've, we've had commerce since the Stone Ages before Christ. And, you know, we had a bartering system. And so when you stop the flow of commerce and the hospitality industry is just as hospitable. And I can live with, I just want to know the rules. Give me a set of rules. I, I, I laid out what we're doing to keep the place clean and safe for our employees. If there's something else that we need to do, I think my restaurant and, and everybody in the restaurant industry are willing to take additional measures. We just need to know what they are. If 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 uh, we had those, if we need to do those, we would do those. But right now, we're utilizing every tool in the toolbox that keeps us safe based on what you know experts have told us to do. Uh, Marty Nolenberg with us here on the Mega Cast. He's the co-owner of a Sedona Tap House Restaurants. And Marty, just in full disclosure, people should know that I do work part time, or it's like a pick up a, a one day a week. I typically would work at our local neighborhood a restaurant bar, and I did it because I'm working on a project on the sidelines about uh, frontliners on COVID-19 and how really, uh, as the different phases of this pandemic go through our society, we're kind of lost, right? So I wanted to be on the front lines to see what they were experiencing, but also to talk to people that are in these industries and to see what they're experiencing. And I will tell you, um, I miss that job. Like I miss like meeting new people and meeting like the salt of the earth people that make our community thrive and the hearing their stories. And so I'm excited. I haven't gone back to work yet, but I will be soon. Um, but, you know, so just in full disclosure, obviously I see a different side of this as well. And I really did it just for this project I'm working on for the media, but you see the mental side of this as well. And I don't think people are really kind of taking that mental side into consideration because I feel like if people come out to eat in a restaurant, they know the risk and they're willing to take the risk. Um, because we all know that local restaurants, you, we get outbreaks, but you can't say where an outbreak starts as well. And it's so hard because um, we wanna get back to where we were, but how do we get back there uh, but you have such an interesting side to this because you also were an elected leader at some point in time. So what are your thoughts on this and the government side to the response to this pandemic? I mean, I think, you know, unfortunately, there's um, absolute stalemate. I, I, my biggest concern with what's happening in Lansing is the fact that there's no legislative um, involvement at all. And, and if I were and obviously, I was a Republican lawmaker, but if I were a Democratic lawmaker, you know, I'd want to be on political record as having voted for, you know, uh, the governor's initiatives. And so they, 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 they aren't on public record because there's no voting occurring. And the governor has taken this uh, mm -hmm. initiative and, um, you know, it's all by herself. And she's gone solo in this in the entire effort. And so as, you know, the lawmakers, I I speak to, they, they want to be involved. They, they want to be able to have a voice and a say, and, and there doesn't seem to be that interaction. And so you want to debate some of these issues. You know, there's no debating on these issues. There's no votes on these issues. 
And it's frustrating. Um, it would be frustrating for me if I were there that, you know, you spend all this time meeting with your constituents, you know, trying to get yourself elected. And then you go up to Lansing and then you don't really aren't able to vote on anything. And, and, and I've been in the minority and that's not fun, obviously, but you still have a voice when you're in the minority, you can vote against or sometimes you vote with, you know, the, uh, the opposite party. And, and so there's none of that going on. So I feel bad for the lawmakers that are up there that don't have a voice. And, and I put the blame on the governor in this case because she's not allowed um, them to have a vote. She, she's ruling through her executive orders. And let's face it, the health department's orders, that, those are her orders. I mean, she's the boss. The health department's working for the governor. And, you know, it's a smoke screen. And, and I think people need to realize that, you know, if you like, you know, the shutdowns and, and the policies, it's on her. If you don't, it's on her. And if you're a lawmaker, um, you can't blame the lawmaker because they, they really have no say. Yeah, I, uh, we will, uh, let's just be clear, uh, politics are at play here. So even though she lost her executive power position um, back in October, when it comes from the health department, it's coming from her. Absolutely. And you also wonder, uh, it, could that have had something to do with Gordon leaving his position, um, that is still yet to be determined. But I love your a viewpoint on this because you do see both sides of the coin as well. And so I should just mention, it just came across the wires that the governor is expected to give us an update today at 1.30 this afternoon. My guess, a lot of that is going to have to center around the issue of students wanting that, that in high school sports and the huge pushback that's going on right now. My guess you might lessen <laughs> uh, some of those rules and regulations, but getting back to where uh, you are and your business, how long do you think that your company, even at 25%, is that enough to really be able to sustain being open right now? You know, it, it, our restaurant, we obviously um, do better on the weekends. And, and so, you know, we're going to take a big hit on the weekend because we just cannot get the number of people in uh, those time slots. And so for a lot of restaurant owners, they, they can make a third to half of their income on a weekend. And so if not more, um, I guess time will tell. Um, you know, so far we've been open three days and it, it's been pretty good. I'll, I'll take it. And, um, you know, we're down obviously over a uh, prior year, but it does a couple things for us. One, it obviously allows us to bring our employees back into the fold. It uh, creates excitement for them. Um, it also energizes them, uh, creates energy within their restaurant. So I'm happy that we're able to bring those folks back. It also allows them to, you know, keep up with their skills and, and this slow pace will allow them to kind of fine tune the time that they were gone for. Uh, I, I think from a guest experience, I think our guests are understanding, look, everybody knew that we were closed for months and months. Everybody now knows that we were open February 1st. So there's a lot of pent up demand for our guests to want to be out. And, and they understand the rule. They understand they're not our rule, but the rules that we have to follow. And, and so far they, they're, they're, they're you know, abiding by the protocols that we have in place. And so um, I think it's a start, Ronnie. I, I don't, it's, it's not gonna get us where we need to get to. Um, you know, I, 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 we cannot, Really afford to go backwards because every time you shut down, you got to lay people off. When you bring them back, you have to retrain them. You have food that goes to spoilage. It, you know, for instance, we advertised back in October for our December holiday season. That's what that money was wasted. You couldn't even use it. And so, you know, we just can't, you know, if she's going to tell us to shut down, then tell us, tell me six months from now. And, and I doubt if she would do that, but we, we need that sense of certainty you know, for all the above uh, reasons. And um, time will tell. I mean, this is a good start. Um, you know, I should just back up a bit, you know, the when she shut it down back in November, I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty with, you know, the definition of outdoor seating. And, you know, you had a number of tents and igloos and the whole theme, thing seemed kind of silly. We didn't know how long this thing was going to last. And so, you know, the tent thing, they kept changing the rules there. You had to have two opposing sides open. The tables had to be within eight feet of the, you know, opening space. And that didn't come out until well over a month of her initial initiative. So those 
restaurants that bought tents all of a sudden found themselves that the tent wasn't working in a way that they had hoped. Then this igloo thing, you know, and I didn't know if that was going to stay or not. And we finally pulled the trigger in our Troy location and, and they've been up for a couple of weeks. I know by location we waited and another four week back order, backlog. And so I'm, I'm not expecting to get my igloos till next week. And so as a business owner, you want to know what you're able to do and not able to do. And we've not had that, but you know, another shutdown would be devastating. I, I just don't know how financially restaurants are expected to handle no, no revenue coming in. And as you pointed out, takeout service, I mean, that helps, it keeps people employed, but it really doesn't add to the bottom line. It just keeps people employed and, you know, helps our guests and it pays some bills, but, you know, that's not the business model that restaurants got themselves into. Well, and on top of that, too, when you're, uh, you know, they're offering what they, you know, our politicians like to stand in front of the podium and do a press conference to say about these grants that they're offering. But really, when you look into it, number one, the grants aren't even going to be close enough. I think for businesses, 20000 that's grateful for any dollar you could get. But two, it's like by the time you apply and you actually get the money and it's up to a certain percentage, I know the people I work with that applied for the latest grant for the um, restaurant workers, because our uh, place had been closed completely. They've received nothing so far. Um, so, you know, you're looking at your rent and you're looking at your car payment and you're looking at your electric bill. And what are you saying? <laughs> like, well, the governor said, didn't you see the press conference? He said the money's coming. I applied for it. But, you know, it, it, it makes it harder. And really, at the end of the day, up to $1,600 when you've been out of work for three months, that really does nothing. But, you know, yeah, but it gives them a headline. It gives them a press conference. It's good scraps. And, you know, we, we've applied for some of the state grants and county grants and it, it's appreciative, but it's, it's, you know, it's scraps and, 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 and we're fighting for every dollar we can get and we're trying to cut costs everywhere we can cut. And, you know, it, it's, it's, we're, 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 we're fighting for scraps. I mean, I guess it's, that's, um, we'll take whatever scrap we can get though. So Marty, um, I have to say, uh, people keep laughing at me. So one of the big issues, of course, with restaurants is you can't wear a mask. And I think the latest uh, recommendation is that you keep your mask on the entire time, except for in between bites, right? Like you take it off, you take a drink, you take it off, you take it. So my sister had um, come up with a mask. Um, and, and so you actually put it on, right? But it has a little zip thing. So it's, it's double. So you can keep your mask on the entire time and you can eat and drink. And so she made them, it had them made for our family and stuff. And then um, she was like, people, every time we go out, people are like, where'd you get the mask? Where'd you get the mask? So she started making, making them, but I put them on my Facebook and everyone was laughing. And I was like, no, it's, it's not a joke. It's real. Like, this is the answer right here. Like when the governor says, oh, you can't eat and drink with you. You have to take a mask off. Well, no, I don't have to take my mask off. <laughs> Yeah, solutions. You know, we're, we're about solutions. Uh, well, you know, I, I appreciate that because, <laughs> you know, I don't have all the answers and, you know, we're always looking for better ways of doing things. And, and, and obviously safety is really important now. And, and if there's better ways of doing stuff, we, we want to know about it. And, and so, you know, I think we've done a pretty good job of, of keeping our restaurants safe, our patrons safe, you know, our employees safe. And so we're all about safety and you know, we put a lot of, you know, safety uh, efforts in place and, but that's not to say that there's more, that more can't be done. And so we're open to that. And, you know, it's interesting though, that, you know, 47 other states are, are open. And I mentioned this earlier in some way, shape or form. And, 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 you know, it's not perfect. I mean, it's, it's, it, this, this virus isn't going to go away completely by itself. It's going to require, you know, the safety measures and the vaccines that are coming out and, in time and I think eventually, you know, we'll have a better handle on all this. And so, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm open for all kinds <laughs> of ideas. Well, I can send you a mask, <laughs> but with that though, I, I do have to ask because, um, so I, I'm from Ohio. I've been going back to Ohio uh, quite a bit during this. And I will say every time I've been back in Ohio before the reopening of our restaurants, I was like, I just want to go sit down and eat at a restaurant. And I know a lot of people that live on the borders of some of these other states of Indiana, Wisconsin, but 
you know, Ohio, like in Monroe, that's exactly what they're doing. They're just going over the border. They're right. still doing it. But I also know a lot of friends that have been saying, we're done. Mentally, they're drained. And the ones that are financially able to do so, they're taking off and they're going to Florida for two, three weeks yep. uh, because they can, you know, better weather and you can eat at a restaurant. It's something about the mental part of this. And do you think that plays into it? Like also it's, it, it's kind of a backlash on you and your industry here in the state of Michigan, even though you're not making these decisions. I, I, I mean, I guess it's, um, but people have that choice and, and they're choosing to go to Ohio. They're choosing to go to Indiana. I have a friend that lives in uh, Chicago and outside of Chicago and in Chicago shut down completely. You know, she, she can work out of her house. And so, you know, she's in Florida for a month and she rented an apartment, a fully furnished apartment, an hour from the ocean. But in her mind, it's like, Marty, you know, I, I can get a cup of coffee, you know, and, and, and get it from, you know, around the corner. I can't do that in Chicago. You know, I can have lunch or I could, you know, have, have dinner. And so she made that decision that uh, she was going to go to Florida. She can afford to do it. And, and I think we forget about that. I mean, look, I don't, if you're not feeling safe about going to restaurants, you know, I really don't want you coming into my place. I want you to feel safe. And if you don't feel safe, no, I don't blame you. You know, no offense. You're not hurting my feelings. If you don't feel safe, then you ought not to come into my restaurant or any restaurant until you, you know, feel safe to do so. And, 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 and I'm not offended at all. And, 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 you know, you have to do what's best for yourselves, uh, yourself. And, um, and, and hopefully, as time goes on, more people will feel more comfortable going out. But there's a lot of pent up demand, uh, Ronnie. People do want to be out. They do want to socialize. They do want to meet their friends. They want to go out with their family. They, they want to have food served to them, as opposed to making it from home. They're tired of doing a pickup thing. I mean, you have to get in your car, go get it, bring it back. And it's not the same as when you had the meal brought right out to you and it's it's cold like it should be, or it's hot like it should be. You know, when you take it home, you lose some of that, uh, you know, you know that effort. And um, and and it's people want to experience um, and engage in the restaurant world, and 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 people want to be out. And so, um, yeah. So for those that um, don't want to go out, then they ought to stay home. And I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. You know, and I see that too. Um, we were just having the conversation last night, uh, people like pointing out businesses that, oh, they saw someone without a mask. It was like, well, if you're that uncomfortable, stay home. Um, you know, but I'm with you. Like I miss people. <laughs> I need people. I love my husband. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I do love him, <laughs> but I'm tired of talking about comic books. <laughs> <laughs> and and he knows better to talk about sports with me, Marty. So I'm with you. I need to, I need to talk to people. <laughs> I understand. Well, it's been great having you on, and we always appreciate uh, your perspective on this issue as well. But we do wish you a continual success. Uh, the two locations I've been to the location in Troy. I've not been to the one in Novi yet. But hopefully, uh, no future closures in our future. I agree. I agree. I pre appreciate you having me. I enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll talk soon. Well, best of luck. And I'm going to put uh, the location on my must go to um, <laughs> places over the week, because also people don't understand. It's just that business relationship. Like, you know, you can meet over a drink now right. or over a coffee. So that's, that's great as well. Zoom doesn't do it for me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much.